So I've officially been using iPadOS 16 Beta 1 on my M1 iPad Pro for the last 24 hours. And just to preface this, this video is going to be all about Stage Manager. I posted a Twitter post about some questions that you guys wanted to ask in terms of how it actually works and the little nuances that go with Stage Manager and it's to see how stable it is overall on the M1 iPad Pro. Now again, I have the M1 12.9 inch iPad Pro, the baseline model, so I have 128 gigs of storage and only 8 gigs of RAM. If you want to go with the one terabyte storage model, which I do recommend, now that we're going to have all this extra like power and all this extra like use cases with the iPad Pro, if you can spare the money, I would go with the one terabyte version because that gives you 16 gigs of RAM. And I'm going to also preface this by saying this is a beta one. And I would say that iPad OS 16 overall is pretty stable when you're using it only on the iPad. It's not until you go to actually the secondary monitor support where things start to really break down. So I would say it's like 95% stable just on the iPad Pro because I've been able to actually edit these videos in LumaFusion on iPad OS 16, but it's not until you get into that secondary monitor support where it works like maybe one set of every couple times. And I would say it only works like one out of every two times, and, and, but I'll show you guys exactly what I mean by that. But I'm gonna answer all these questions to let you guys know exactly what's going on with Stage Manager specifically. So let's get into it. So the number one question I was actually getting on Twitter is, does it work in clamshell mode slash can you use it as a ghost laptop? So what clamshell mode means is with any other, you know, Windows or Mac OS operating system, you can plug in your computer with a USB-C cable or an HDMI cable, you can close it shut and then basically your secondary monitor becomes your main monitor and you can still use it with keyboard and mouse peripherals. Now with the iPad Pro and iPad OS 16, as of right now with beta one, if you put it in clamshell mode, it is not going to work. It's gonna turn off immediately. And then if you still are plugged in and you open it back up, then it's gonna turn on immediately as well. So can you use it in clamshell mode? The short answer is no, you cannot. The next question I had was, do you need a magic keyboard in order for Stage Manager to work either on the iPad itself or with that secondary monitor? And the answer is no, you can actually use it in tablet mode. You don't need any keyboard. You don't need a magic keyboard. You don't need a third party keyboard. You don't need a mouse. You don't need a trackpad. All you have to do is turn on the stage manager mode in the control center and then you have all your floating windows and it follows the same kind of practice that it does regularly. So you can have up to four floating windows at once and you can kind of group them together on the left hand side, which I don't know what they're calling it, but I'm calling it the shelf or the app shelf. But again, it does work and I would recommend using it only with your tablet, right? Like only with the iPad because technically if you plug it into a secondary monitor, which I'm going to show you guys, you can actually open a window on the iPad itself, press the three dots and move it to that secondary monitor. But then the moment it goes to that secondary monitor, you can't really do anything with it, right? Because you can't, there's no trackpad, there's no mouse, so you can actually use a pointer to go to that secondary monitor. So it's kind of, you know, not really worth it at all. It's just a visual thing. Maybe if you have a video that you wanted to play up there at one point. But again, it does work without a keyboard if you just want to use it on the iPad itself. So the next question I got was, how does the external display work when you have Stage Manager turned off? And as of right now, in Beta 1, it pretty much breaks everything that's going on with the external monitor. Sometimes it works if you follow like a certain order of operations. So like if you open up an application in stage manager mode on the actual iPad itself, then move it up to the external display and then turn off stage manager, then it does go kind of full screen. So I do think Apple eventually is going to go full screen on the top monitor or on that secondary monitor. Just right now it does break down because again, it is a beta one. It's the first time people are testing it. So overall, I think it will work when it does release to the entire public. But for right now with beta one, it does not work, but there are hints that it should be working. And it looks like you're gonna be able to use it in multitasking mode as if it's kind of like a split screen, even with stage manager turned off. Another very valid question that I got from you guys was, does it work with an HDMI port? Because again, not everybody has an external monitor that's USB-C or Thunderbolt capable. Normally the cheaper monitors, which are still great monitors, are HDMI capable or, or display port capable. So with an HDMI port, as long as you have a dongle, so I use one by ChargeM Pro, it's a simple one, it does work and it works normally. So if you do have a monitor that doesn't have USB-C but has HDMI, and you have a dongle that goes from USB-C or Thunderbolt to HDMI, it's gonna work and you're gonna be able to use that secondary monitor with your iPad Pro. Another interesting question that I got was, how does Stage Manager work with iPhone apps? Because again, things like Instagram, things like Coinbase, there's some apps that still are only for the iPhone that yes, you can use on your iPad Pro, but it works a little weird. I mean, it just kind of opens up like it would on iPad OS 15 or 14. It takes up the entire screen. It's a stretched out version. And even if you're in Stage Manager mode, you can't multitask with it. So you can kind of have it up and open and you can have Stage Manager mode open on the side but you can't have it as part of those like one out of four applications. So you can't have an iPhone app with a bunch of iPad apps running at the same time, unfortunately. But again, everything that I'm saying has to do with beta one. 
Who knows, Apple, as they start iterating on the betas and start getting us closer to that September launch, which is probably when it's gonna happen, maybe they'll fix that issue. But for now, if you have an iPhone app only, so if you're using Instagram on your iPad, it's gonna work exactly the same and you cannot multitask with that application. Another interesting question that I got was, how does Stage Manager work when you turn your iPad into portrait mode? And I believe with the B-roll shot that I had, so I had it in landscape mode, I pulled it off of the actual Magic Keyboard, I turned it into portrait mode, and the second that happened, it kind of did a quick reset, but all in all, it does work. So you're still able to use it in portrait mode, but if you are plugged into an external monitor, it's still gonna have it in landscape mode. So think about that, it does work. You can have the same four applications open with the floating windows and things like that. And I'm sure if you have like extra peripherals, like an external keyboard, and external mouse, it'll work normally just in portrait mode. So it does work in portrait mode for all those people that do wanna use it in portrait mode. The next question I got is, it kind of relates to the other question that was answered before was, how does it work on the secondary display when you turn off stage manager and what happens to the applications? So right now, if you have an application up there and you turn off stage manager, it kind of does break down, like I said, but sometimes it does work and you actually will be able to use your entire full secondary monitor screen. So it's not like if you turn off stage manager, you go and revert back to whatever iPadOS 15 was doing, you're gonna be able to use it all. It's just a matter of, again, Apple iterating on the betas and making sure that they're stable enough for them to run. So again, with iPadOS 16 on the iPad itself, it runs decently smooth. I would say about 90 to 95% of stuff is usable on just the iPad itself. It's not really until you turn on that secondary monitor where things really start to break down. And there's a couple of questions you guys had. So in order to actually move files, you can actually move files between the iPad and that secondary display. So you can actually see that I moved something from the files into Twitter, which was, and Twitter was on that secondary display, and I was able to move that file, that image, from the files application into Twitter on the secondary display, no problem. And then something that I did notice is if you do have an application open in stage manager mode on the iPad, you can't drag it physically like you would on any other Windows or Mac OS computer. You can't drag it from your iPad onto the actual secondary display, but there is a workaround. So we still have the three dots on the top of every application that's open, whether you are in stage manager or not in stage manager mode, but in stage manager mode, when you hit those three dots, you get a few options. Option all the way to the left, when you're plugged into a secondary monitor, option all the way to the left is to go full screen with that application. If you're on the iPad, it will go full screen, and if you're on a secondary monitor, it'll go full screen, I would say like 99% full screen. You also have the plus button, which allows you to, again, move that app to the side, open a secondary app, and then brings it back. Very similar to the old multitasking on iPad OS 15, so that's what the plus button is for. You also have the minus button, the minus button actually doesn't delete it, it actually just moves it to the app shelf and makes room for another one. So that's always good to know. And then this is where the fourth one comes in if you are connected to a secondary monitor and you wanna move an app from your iPad onto that secondary display, then you just press that final button and it moves it right up to the top. So that kind of bypasses the need to drag it physically from the iPad onto that secondary monitor. But those are the main things that I wanted to cover in this video. There's still a couple things that I wanna test out, which is first off, I wanna find out how the iPad feels and if it gets warm and if it stays stable. I mean, probably not stable enough, but when you're working on it for like hours on end. I wanna see if it does get warm. You know, I wanna stress test it a little bit more. And then also I wanna see if it works with multiple displays or multiple external displays. That's gonna be a tricky one to actually get done, but we'll get it done probably in a future video. And stay subscribed because we will be doing a full iPadOS 16, kind of every single tips and trick or every single feature that came out with iPadOS 16, including the ones that came to iOS 16 as well and are being ported over to the iPad Pro. But overall, I'm extremely happy with iPadOS 16. Obviously, it's a lot of instability issues, right? A lot of bugs, a lot of performance bugs. But like I said, if you wanna put it on your main device, on the iPad itself, it does work you know, better than expected. It's not until that secondary monitor gets plugged in where things really start to break down on me. And I don't know if it's just my personal iPad experience or if it's kind of everybody because it is a beta one, but let me know in the comments below. And if you guys have more questions, definitely comment them down below because I'll be more than happy to answer them. I'm gonna be covering everything I can with iPadOS 16 because it's one of the biggest updates we've had with iPadOS in a very, very long time probably since like iPadOS 13, in my opinion. But that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys did make it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments below and leave a comment down below if you guys updated to iPadOS 16. Like I said, fair warning if you put it on your main device. I haven't lost any data yet, but it's only been a day of me using it. And I, I wouldn't want you guys to lose data on a main device because again, it is a little bit buggy. But that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys wanna see some other iPadOS 16 videos, click on one of these right here. But until next time, I'm out of here.